here is a church that people a lot of people recognize it's on it's on the um television in Melbourne anyway and probably in Australia I'm not sure how far but it's a church of victory I think you might get a better picture here here is my uh, birth certificate can you read it birth certificate okay this is the card that I found related to the Bible uh, related to the sermon that I spoke about a long time ago Anyway, you have to look into that. I'm not going to talk about that today. Here are the exact words. Yeah, hang on. There's too much shade here. I can't capture it. Hang on. Maybe we'll just put it over here. Okay. Here. The clear states. As you can read what that is. Okay. As we look up here. This states by the confession of my mouth. Jesus as my Lord and be believe in my heart. That God raised him to life. From the dead that is. I am saved. In Romans, is it Romans? Romans uh, 10, 9, 10. Jesus came into my heart by his Holy Spirit. When I asked him in, and he is for, forgave me, a lost sinner. Revelation 3.20. That very moment, I passed out of death into life. John 5.24. God has given me eternal life. And this life is in His Son. 1 John 5.11 I have been born again. Look at the date. It's the 5th of December 1998. I am new creation. Corinthians 5.17 And it is no longer I who live, but Christ liveth in me. Corinthians 2.20 A child of the king. Romans 8.16 1 John 8.12 Sealed by the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 4.30 So as we read this here, Chris states, I've been born again on the 5th of December, 1988. Therefore my birthday is no longer on the 4th day of the 12th month, in December that is, in 1965. I'm no longer 47 years old. If you will relate this to this present time, which is different to the next life, but to understand it, I'm about 24 years old now, not 47. Hello, have a look, authorities, and understand my new birth certificate. The old stuff is gone, is it dead? It's no longer there. Your birth certificate is wrong, it says 4th of 12, 1965. I'm gone there. It doesn't exist anymore, there anymore. Therefore, if you say it's I am a new person in Christ, and it's he that lives in me, that is Jesus Christ. Uh, then it's no longer I that liveth, but Jesus. Therefore, in the Christian faith, Jesus dwells in us. We connect with him by our spirit, the spirit of man and the flesh. Jesus is here and has been throughout the whole Christian faith. I've been chosen as the return. Jesus dwells in all Christian believers. It's not a I, no longer I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in me. Take a good look at these pictures. You will see the bloodline 
that good look points out even the one on the cross points out even Jesus here points out the bloodline from the king of David to the king of Jesus Christ to me points out directly to me you see I pray you will see that for he is my father and I know it I don't have to see it in your books on your family tree although I have seen it on the family tree the line shows directly unto me that I am the king I have not come here all the way from the cosmos to take over the throne if I wanted to do that I would have done it a long time ago and my father wouldn't have died for cosmos salvation but he died that he may bring life all its fullness. I have not come here with the will of God in order to steal the throne or anything like this. It's mine already. I have not come here as a king of kings or of lords, the way, for example, Queen Elizabeth is or a government of the world is or a government. I do not do that sort of thing. I might be expressed that way because I am in heaven like that. Okay, here, that person whose name is um, Spirado shows the example since he's the head of the church that I do run the whole cosmos or rather my father does Jesus Christ I did not come here to steal your throne I gave it to you before time began those that fulfill the will of God I've given them the throne those that do not have stolen it from me that's the agreement and the covenant and I gave or rather Jesus Christ gave and God Almighty back during that period of time. I came here to be a servant of servants. I came here to serve the whole cosmos. That's the kind of king I am. In my world, a servant of servant is the king, not the king. Okay? He is a servant of my father who died for cosmos salvation. A king coming all the way from my world where I first originated from. So if it's God's calling, and you must check up if it is, then I ask the authorities to let me lead the way as a servant or servant. Keep me on a pension check. I'm not asking for any money. Okay? I don't even want any power. Give it the Lord Jesus Christ. In matter of fact, I want nothing. Just give me, keep me on the picture check so I can survive for crying out loud. That's all I'm asking. And I will serve thee. The Christ's kingdom will have no end. And the kingdom of heaven will be established on earth. For God Almighty is always with me and always has been and always will be. Because I'm his son. I came as a servant. I did not come here to steal your throne. If I wanted to do that, I would have done it in war a long time ago. I might have came hard because according to scriptures, people can lose their life. The Bible can be translated in many ways, depending upon how God judges it, and, and relating to the covenant agreement. If people obey God's agreement, yeah, there will be such a thing as cosmos salvation that exists, which we're fighting for very strongly by the word of God. The sort of word that God himself will vote in in the time of the election, and how people should be saved. But God himself can vote that some go to heaven, some go to hell, if people do not obey the agreement and the covenant of the book of Revelation, uh, New Testament beforehand and the Old Testament as to the best of ability he can do that easily because he will simply say well I've given them an agreement I've kept my part of the agreement you saw me on the cross here I am the evidence show that okay my agreement I've been risen and I return with all these saints I, I live in them okay there's Jesus there okay okay They're, I live in all these people in their hearts and if you don't keep your part of the agreement, then God's not obliged to keep his. An agreement is an agreement. When it's broken, it will never be broken by God. But if it's broken by creation, he can judge it that way. I'm not saying he will judge it either way. I'm just saying it can be judged that way, depending upon how Christ judges it. For me, I vote for cosmos salvation, and always will. He knows me very well. Whether this is Christ's will or not is not relevant. What's relevant is that's my vote. There's a vote of election in heaven happening. 
a lot of people are vouching for this, whether he backs himself, he's not running back. If he doesn't, or does, I will still back him up. If he says no, I will back him up, because he's God, not me. If he says yes, then I will still back him up. If he says something else, something else. You can be judged by the word of God in any way or form that you can think of, in relating to God's message, in relating to whether people obey God's agreement, of the Old Testament, New Testament, Revelation, to the best of their ability, or not. In actual fact, under the third agreement in the book of Revelation, it is Christ who will do everything for us and make it possible that the whole cosmos, all the people in the cosmos here, including those pictures that are not in here, this is just an example of everybody being in here, will be saved. It's not what we do in accordance to the original work of Christ. It is judged on cosmos salvation. And, if, and God gets the favor, which it says, I, I've received the victory for that, and I have no reason to doubt him. The cosmos of salvation will definitely exist. And it's not what we do that will save us, but what he has already done, did, and always will do. It's not whether we do fruits, gifts, and works of the Holy Spirit or anything like this. That's what he already does for us. So he will perfect us if this is what has to happen. He will perfect us and we will produce fruit, gifts, and works of the Holy Spirit be anointed by him, that we may be so. The Bible states, unless you are perfect, in that word of God, somewhere in there, says, unless you are perfect, none are perfect, but God alone, mind you, that's what the Bible says, unless you are perfect, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. In other words, you've got to become God Almighty to enter the kingdom of heaven. He clearly states that he will perfect each and every one of us by the end of the age. Therefore, the word of God says, everybody will become exactly or more like Jesus. Otherwise, there's no way they can enter the kingdom of heaven. Only God does. Since we participate from the will of God and become more like Jesus in his family, under his authority as him being God of all, not us, we don't rebel, but he's a king of kings and lord of lords, but we become exactly like him, then the cosmos, under an impossible task, Jesus Christ will succeed in perfecting the cosmos to become exactly like him. who is my father.